Good evening, fellow New Eden pilots. I am Rundle All Nighter, and this is Talking in Stations for Monday, the 19th of April. Uh, we have a very special guest today. It's Nth Dimensional. Say hello, Nth. Hello, world. Ah, he works. Okay, and we have uh, McLeod in the background doing engineering work, being my safety net should I cascade fail. Excellent. So I just uh, really kind of slow news day. So uh, just want to throw out a couple items here. Interestingly enough, if you're a big uh, Plex for Omega, there's a new option to in the uh, NES store, uh, New Eden store, to now get 12 months for the price of 11. So that's new. And so that's uh, you know a nice little discount. Uh, something that they're obviously hoping a lot of people will use their Plex on. And so the cost of game time hopefully uh, will stabilize a little bit there. Uh, interestingly enough, that I think might even play a little bit of a part into our conversation later on here in a minute. Yeah. And I think uh, McLeod's trying to bring that special up. I'm trying to find it right now. It's kind of being uh, I gave to you me. the link, my, my friend. I gave you the link already. Oh, thank you. Before we move on, I'll let you guys take a look at that link. And I will take my time here to say hello to Nick Bison, who I believe is still running for CSM 16. And his uh, slogan is vote early, vote often. All right. All right, there it is. Excellent. So 12 months for 11, for the price 11, if you got a little bit of Plex lying around. Uh, so. Plex obviously plays a big part in the market, and that's the other news item I want to quickly mention, that the markets are continuing to be rather volatile all across uh, New Eden. Uh, fuel blocks, for example, is a great example, just continuing to climb some of these rare items, the gases, stuff like that, lots of speculation going on, uh, faction ships kind of all over the place. Uh, interesting enough, uh, curious if any of the listeners are – are in the speculation game or are trying to hoard resources or do anything like that. I um, curious who the big players are. Interesting enough. I don't think those people will probably speak up, but interesting if anyone's kind of goofing around with it, let me know throughout the show. All right. I think that's a really good segue the market because the interesting part about Nth dimension is that he is spending lots of time lately trying to find some of these upcoming new items through exploration. But before we get into those details, let's actually just hear from Nth Dimension himself. He can introduce himself, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you're doing in EVE, the backstory, all that fun stuff. Hello, I'm Nth Dimensional. So I'm another streamer here on twitch.tv, uh, doing primarily exploration-based content and obviously, last uh, week, we got this new patch that introduced, I think it was 10 or 12 new items um, to uh, exploration-based content, whatever that means, um, into the world that you can only find through this content. You can't manufacture them. And they are going to be required for um, Navy ships as well as pirate faction ships and then also capitals and super capitals. So right now, T1 ships aren't going to be affected by these at all, I believe. Um, T2 ships, I don't think we know the most of the details about how those will be built in the future. That's right. Uh, but definitely pirate ships and um, faction or like navy ships, and then capitals and super capitals. Yes. Yep. All the factional ships, frigates, uh, destroyer frigates, cruisers, battleships. Those are the the uh, empire factions as well as the pirate factions and then battleships and up actually will be using the new um even base battleships but the rest down no so that base battleship will take on some new items uh so that if you're building t2 battleships then you'll have to use the new t1 battleship recipe that should come out reasonably soon and i think the t1 recipes aren't using anything new but they've normalized them so that the amount of materials going into a frigate is pretty much the same regardless of which frigate you're building. And they are, should be ultimately cheaper for a lot of the base T1 frigates, destroyers, cruisers. 
and battle cruisers. So anyways, just for the audience more than you, I'm sure you know what you're doing. And so uh, how long have you been doing exploring? Let's kind of start there because I'm sure you just didn't wake up when these things went live and went, I'm going to go do exploring and find all this rare shit. Yeah, definitely. So I started playing the game around 2005 and then I've been playing Eve on and off, mostly off since that period. Um, but about a year ago, I really dived back in pretty heavily. Um, and from there, I like I, I loaded it up and I'm like, I already knew that I liked exploration in the game. So I'm like, let's join a corp. So I joined a corp that was based in Providence, one of the, the new groups in Providence now that it's not CVA or anything. Um, and so we did just your standard kind of like relic hunting in Nullsec. Um, a lot of explorers already kind of know about that. And from there, I got more intrigued about being more efficient about how to go about doing this and just learning more and more finer and finer details. So things about like how to hack efficiently, the rules about the hacking board, as well as like how to scan efficiently. And then just from there, I just continue to just try and develop my skill set. The thing that I really like about exploration in EVE Online is that it's primarily like your player skill, like you as a person, how skilled you can be. And it's a lot less SP dependent. And also there's a very large um, discrepancy between like a bad explorer, how much they can make and a good explorer, how much they can make. Whereas like if you go rat in anomalies or whatnot, you're going to get a pretty narrow range of like, as long as you have the right ship type, ship build, etc. You're going to get a pretty narrow range of like what disc you're making whereas with exploration there is just always something to improve upon and so that's just kind of where we're going and then eventually like we got this uh new patch with these new items and so of course we're we're doing all the investigation that we can to figure out how we can how we can squeeze the most isk out of this awesome so before we get into the uh, the new items on the exploration, just want to touch on this because I, by no stretch of imagination, um, it would classify myself as a good explorer. I'm probably on that spectrum. I'm at the bottom end that you, <laughs> that you stated. So I'm holding, I'm, I'm anchoring the low end of the ISK from exploration. How do I make myself better? How does anyone else who finds themselves in uh, my situation of, damn, I'm no damn good at this. Uh, what should I do? Well, you're not going to like this answer. But it's practice, practice and experience. Um, just getting out there, going exploring. Uh, you, you go fit up a cheap ship. You go explore. You're going to run into some problems, especially if you're in Knoll or Wormhole, or if you're doing some of the more intricate sites. You're going to explode at least a dozen times, and um, eventually, once you've done it enough, you're like, "Oh, I kind of have an idea about what I'm doing." Awesome. I'm always, uh, I, I've watched a few of the videos and I don't know, maybe I'm just not, uh, just not practicing enough, but the, the, uh, when you get into doing the actual hacking itself, I, I try to follow the simple, I'm air quoting if everyone, you can't see me, but I'm air quoting the simple kind of rules to do the hacking. And I always seem to fail, but practice, I'll take that. I'll take that challenge up for sure. Um, yeah. So, and Pravi, you're now. Are you still in Pravi, rolling around there? Because it's a reasonably good place for data sites and relics. I am no longer uh, aligned with Pravi. As about like a week ago, uh, of course, there's drama involved with that, but that'll have to wait for another day. Um, but so I used to be allied with the people in Providence, so I would mainly do relic sites around that area. Um, as of about like a week ago, I am now just like a, I'll say a free agent, even though like. I'm not a free agent. I'm with another court, but like, I'm like a drifter now. So, and that's been super fun. Like I can just go anywhere, uh, use wormholes, go to any kind of security sec or whatever. Everyone's neutral. It's great. <laughs> Everyone's an enemy. High alert all the time. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So the changes come, let's kind of move into the changes, the real meat of this uh, interview, the changes happen and you wake up and you're like, what? Like, what's your first step? Uh, my first step was, let's check out the data sites. And just my, my thought was NullSec data sites, because that's where we make a lot of money, right? So, and I think a lot of pro people probably also did this. We went to go check out the NullSec data sites. And lo and behold, we found nothing. <laughs> and we just continue to find nothing in the standard LowSec data sites. And that's because... No new items are actually dropping in the low sec or the the null sec 
standard like pirate data sites. Okay. So from there, we're like, well, where are these things? So um, we started searching. We we got some more information. We found um, sleeper caches are dropping the isotropic disposition guides. Uh, we found that the covert ghost sites are dropping the capital and super capital components. And then the uh, primarily high sec and then sometimes low sec data sites are dropping the um, condensed molecular condenser or composite molecular condensers. In what sort of quantities? If Could you give us an idea? Is it just like a one yeah. per every site is just like a, a drop of one? Or can you get multiple per, uh, I guess it's like the relic item or what do you call it? The cache, right? Is it multiples per cache or one per cache, but there's multiple cache in a site? Yeah, so this is an interesting answer. Um, so we're going to talk mainly about the condensed molecular or composite molecular condensers or the CMCs. I'm just calling them CMCs from here on out. Yeah, that's a um, multiple anyways. Those are the, the items that we're going to need for the uh, faction ships and the pirate ships. And those are going to be dropping from high sec and low sec sites. When you get some, it seems to be about 10 of them uh, whenever you get them. That said, they don't drop in every can. They're actually decently rare. Um, I just finished my stream up today. We were looking exclusively for those things. We found 40 of them in four hours. Uh, I would say that I'm I'm quite adept at getting those. So I think like if you're a standard kind of explorer, you maybe can expect like 20 an hour. Okay, that's uh. Now the these are not the ghost sites, right? These are just the standard relic data sites in high sec. Right? These are the data, not relic at all. Just, just okay. data. So, yeah. Another thing is none of these new items drop in any relic sites. They're all data site exclusive. And um, yeah, so high sec data sites and some low sec data sites. Okay. All right. Uh, so do you happen to know, or maybe anyone in the audience, I'm trying to click in the background here. I cannot remember off the top of my head and I don't have the spreadsheet up. How many are going to be needed per like a one run of a faction? I don't know what battleship or faction. I'm sure there's tiers, right? So do you know, those, great do you know those numbers right now? <laughs> yeah. Um so a a faction um what are they called the the like faction navy are they all navy? Uh it's it's the em empire faction so like the Okay. Yeah. So the empire factions ones uh will do frigates they cost 2.1 um of these CMCs. The cruisers are 10 times that so 21 CMCs uh and then battleships are um like a hundred five times that five times that so a hundred yeah a hundred and up to a hundred five or something yeah somewhere else. um for the pirate factions just double everything so if it's like garistas which come from like caldari and um amar no uh galente so if it's garistas which is a, a mix of galante and caldari you're just gonna have double that great so, yeah, those, so so a lot is what yeah, I'm saying. So I just I'm just you know, I'm doing the math, right? So if you're doing ten or so an hour, roughly, and you can then be doing okay for if you're in the frigate building business, and you're probably gonna do all right if you're in the cruiser building business. But you better get your expiration on if you're in the battleship building business. Is what I'm hearing. Because that's a week. Yeah. That's you know, if you can play for four or five hours a night, which you know maybe most people can, it's one battleship a week of the of the Empire factions. And if it's double that, it's a couple of weeks for you to just go get your own stuff to build one of the pirate factions. That's a lot of exploration, I would have to imagine. <laughs> yeah. So like if if you're like a solo industrialist or whatnot, and like you build ships for yourself, I don't think it's too much of an issue. If you're like a like a null block industrial leader and you your doctrine's materials, you might need to think about your doctrine here so shortly. <laughs> no kidding. That is, uh, I'm just blown away by the numbers. All right, so um, wow, where do I go from there? Uh, so what? Do, I hope. I mean, this is going to be one of those things where they can obviously, you know, it's a it's a knob now that they can turn. 
hopefully maybe yeah, yeah. some tuning there down the road or they can trigger them elsewhere so that they become a more uh not just high sec but maybe it's uh you know the the rate of spawning in high sec is higher than low sec and maybe they can you know spread a little bit of love around but i would imagine the numbers that you're finding are going to be very similar or um awkwardly uh awkwardly large for as you move into the capital and super capital um and those things are dropping not in high sec i'm assuming and those will be out in the null sec somewhere right so the, if you ask me personally like i don't know i'm not CZP or anything i would imagine that the drop rate on these things will increase um because right now i think it's a little bit ludicrous where it stands like pirate and faction uh or empire um ships don't really exist uh and then the problem only kind of gets worse in my opinion right now for capitals and super capitals yeah that's that's not so so you mentioned these other data sets i just want before like i'll cap i'll uh i'll get my thoughts together on this high sex stuff because those numbers are just still rattling around my head it's just insane but uh ghost sites right so if, if you run some ghost sites because my understanding is those things are as dangerous as all get out that is not a casual explorer's, you know, thing. Yeah. So with ghost sites, if you're just like a typical explorer and you don't fit specifically for ghost sites or if you don't know what you're doing in them, you're going to explode. You're going to explode a lot. Even if you do know what you're doing and you don't fit correctly, you'll still explode sometimes. Um, but yeah, that's that's where we get the the capital and super capital components, um, all of them. So like the six of the items that you need um drop from covert ghost sites and to my knowledge here i'm speaking a little bit about like i don't know anything for certain so don't quote me on on any of these but i'm saying that the five of the super capital components drop from um null sec and wormhole covert ghost sites and then the the one item that you need for capital production uh, the electro neural signaler, I believe that drops only from wormhole covert ghost sites. Again, don't quote me on that. That's just what I, my current thought process is. Okay. So can you, let's actually back up because uh, some people in the audience uh, by the typing know what a ghost site is. I'm sure a lot don't. I'm barely familiar with them as well. So I can't explain it. Can you back up and explain to us what the heck a ghost site yeah. is and how it compares to your regular data or relic site? I'm assuming it's still a form of a data site, right? So Yeah, definitely. So covert ghost sites are a special kind of data site. They're always a level three data site, if that matters to you. Uh, but they can be found in anywhere between high sec to wormhole sec. And depending on what security status you're in, they get better or worse or more or less dangerous. So you warp in, and then once you warp in, a secret timer starts. It's anywhere, to my knowledge, again, this isn't confirmed, anywhere between 30 seconds to three minutes. Um, and so that countdown starts ticking down. There are four cans, always kind of placed exactly the same, regardless of where you're at, um, and you can hack these cans. They're decently easy cans to hack, like they're not hard, but if you fail them, they explode and they do explosive damage and a lot of it. Uh, so if you're not tanked properly, you will explode. Um, and then, of course, high sec ones do less damage, so they're easier to tank for. Wormhole ones do the most. And like wormhole, I think it's 12,000 um, explosive damage, which if you're a frigate, it's a lot. Uh, so, yeah, you actually see on the screen right now, uh, 12,000 for wormholes. Um, and then... What am I trying to say here? Um, oh, right. If you fail a can, it explodes and you explode. Uh, or, and or, if the timer runs out, the secret hidden timer between 30 seconds to three minutes, if that runs out, a group of NPCs warp down onto your site and they blow up the cans for you, causing you to explode probably. Um, so if you're not like ready, if you, if you can't successfully hack the cans or if you can't do it quickly, these sites become quickly dangerous, um, especially if you're not tanked to be able to handle one of those explosions. That sounds uh, unfriendly at best and nightmarish yeah. at, at worst. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, 
and, and is this a can you do it with friends so you go fast can four people go in and and like I'll I'll take this can you take that can and two others take the other can and then GTFO yeah. so yeah actually um I have done this in the past if you have friends you can both warp onto the site at the same time you can say I'll take the main frame and the one to the counterclockwise of that and then the other guy's like okay I'll take the the clockwise one and two positions of whatever the main frame is so in all of these sites there's going to be one quote unquote good can and then three quote unquote bad cans. Um but yeah you can totally double team these. But that said, if your friend blows up a can, then you'll be taking some damage too. Yeah, I just wanted, sure they, to, uh, just wanted yeah, to quickly ahead. ask, um because I've seen you doing uh you know various different sites, uh like uh maybe not ghost sites as such, but can you uh can you cargo scan the ghost site containers like you would regular data sites or yeah, a hundred percent, and and Excellent. I would definitely recommend probably cargo scanning them. So go for the good can, maybe that could be another strategy. Just zip in, get yeah. the good can, and get out, and then let the just move on to the next go site. Yep, that's a, probably another strategy. Okay, um, so uh, you know maybe the audience, uh, you know, not good time to go to the audience see if there's any questions that they want to see covered. Uh, just to uh, Go for it. Let's see if there's any here that's backing up here. Um, no, I see. So how, what's, okay. So in, yeah, what's the so, percent of percent chance of screwing these up? So you mentioned go sites screwing things up. Is that a, is that like a 50, 50 thing? Or um, what's, if you've never done one, it's pretty much a hundred percent. You're going to screw one up pretty quickly. <laughs> um, uh, as you get you more used to them, I would say you maybe screw up one in, this is of course extremely rough numbers, but like one in 15. And that's because again, this, this hidden timer, like sometimes it's really low, like 30 seconds. So like you go, you scan all the cans out, which weighs, we'll say like 15 seconds. You go uh, forward to go hack the can that you want. You start hacking it and then the guys show up and they blow up your can and then you blow up. So oh, wow. uh, I would say if you are not tanked for it, you eventually will blow up regardless of how good you are at it. That's uh, I didn't even think someone coming in and just shooting it and blowing you up as a way. Oh, yeah. To, also, people can can ruin it for you, too. It's coming to ruin your, your day. Uh, OK, so um, really good question by Rifter Girl. Uh, are you finding the sites busy in high sec? And I will add an element to that. To talk, ask, just want you to talk about what's happening in high sec and maybe some strategies that you're employing now or seeing, and what might work moving forward as high sec obviously is going to become a lot busier. So, uh, yeah, and I mean, I would say so. I'm not like super familiar with high sec um, exploration just because I don't do it a whole lot. That said, uh, over the past few days that we've done it, I think it's pretty. It's a pretty standard affair. Uh, we were doing a route which took us from Jita to Amar just back and forth the very like the high sec 47 jump route and there the we didn't road find road. basically anything because obviously that's a that's a super well traveled route uh later we went on more beaten path areas and definitely found more sites there so just just go away from where everyone else is <laughs> and then then you'll find more but you're not finding any clustering right now or any uh, any uh, you know um no pattern i think is what i'm trying to ask you don't see any pattern or other, or maybe anyone in the audience, is anyone seeing pattern or the groups that you interact with? Because I'm assuming you interact with a lot of other explorers as well. Anyone putting any of the pieces of the puzzle together? Um, so, like, I don't know if this is really, I don't think I have an answer for your question, but it did make okay. me think of something that probably people want to know. Um, so there are four different kind of uh, condensed molecular or compressed, whatever, CMCs. Um and they actually align with the different factions. So the AGs, they're blue, they're Kaldari. The AVs are Mimitar, they're, they're Rust Water. Uh, you have the Golden Amar, and who else said Galente? You have the Green Galente. Um, and so depending on what... So like all of these data sites are, are pirate faction. So depending on whatever makes up that pirate faction. So again, Garistas, it's going to be uh, Galente and Kaldari. So if you go to a Garista site, you have a chance of getting the AG CMCs. 
and the um the LVs, I think that's the Glente, the green one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that that, well, that makes sense. Uh, you know, for the um the uh, changes for the um the artwork and the and I just for spaced on the name uh the um they changed the the each of those uh data sites to have their own kind of color pattern now so that when you yeah uh, warp i actually in, love that right uh so those got some love to that and then that probably further emphasizes that look in each of the empires you're going to get each of the items out for those builds for those um ultimate for that build chain for that uh, faction right for that empire faction and for the various pirate factions that uses each empire yeah so definitely like we might see more explorers like come to Mimitar space because who doesn't love their materials right um and so we're gonna need to get some of those uh items so i think this is a good way to can actually push people into different regions of spaces that they might not otherwise be in because there's there's gonna be a lot of different supply and demand i don't know what like right now the supply of like the ags or the caldari is is the biggest they're the most common but like what is the demand going to be like people do want gilas so obviously there's going to be a lot of demand for the the ags but i don't know how that's going to shake out and what's going to like there's going to be some kind of equilibrium that's going to help you determine where you want to explore in and again this is all like high sec exploration again none of this is a null right so that's actually another question i have for you uh maybe good segue the dangerous side of exploring, right? So I, I at least I can, and most people probably can figure out the dangers of null sec and low sec exploration is, you know, you're away, uh, well, you can be found in, in combat instantly in null sec and in low sec, there's uh, you're nowhere near gates. So you're, it's basically going to function the same in high sec. I honestly don't know this. If I was to try to steal a can or try and kill you or something, do the police show up? Just like any, just like anywhere else in, or do they yeah, avoid? So high sec is actually, in my opinion, the most competitive and cutthroat <laughs> exploration there is because, um, there is no, like if you, uh, if you go to a site and people are on it, if you, if you start hacking the can, that's your can. So if they shoot you because you, you quote unquote took their can, then the police come after them. So it's all about who can scan the fastest, who can who can get to the can the fastest, who can scan the cans to figure out which one they want. Um, that said, they're also like high sec isn't necessarily the safest place in the world. There's uh, our good friends safety or code. So you might want to be getting your your exploration permit or else they might see you in your exploration ship now and be like, oh, we're going to we're going to take care of that. Yeah. Uh, that's exactly where I was going. Thanks for reading my mind. And Roderick, uh, you know, same thing, right? Like you can't, uh, you can't hack the same can. So there's no necessarily version of can flipping, but there's site flipping or, um, you know, I guess if you two people are in there and, you know, you start hacking after the can or they've hacked it and the can sitting in there and you want to go try and open it, then that would be a can flip. But, um, and then they would, you could uh, yeah. So if someone lawful combat at that point, yeah. If someone um, like hacks a can and successfully opens it, they are the only one that can actually like get the contents of that can. Um, so like you can't you can't steal another person's can once they start hacking it. Yeah. So just to be clear to anyone listening, permits. There is no uh, actual in-game structure of permits, exploration permits or mining permits, but there are, there is uh, some organizations out there that are um that believe that uh permits are required in new eden for you to do your uh, activities code being one of them um those guys uh will might you know might have a conversation with you uh it's all part of the game of the player you know sandbox style um yeah so warrior uh four three five six just kind of dropped in and wanted to know about confirmation on the new loot spawning outside of ghost sites. And yes, we have been talking extensively about in high sec where the empire, uh, CMCs, MCs, yeah. Hard to yeah, the CMCs. name. CMCs. Yeah, yep. CMCs, right. Where those are dropping and it's uh, exclusively in high sec and we're just kind of working our way through the, the various ones. So then what's next for you? What, where are you going to take your exploration 
next? Are you just going to start farming and try to have a big cache of, of loot ready, or do you, or, or is more for you trying to figure out the exploration yeah. patterns? Like, what are you doing next? So right now, the golden goose that we're after is this item called Electro Neural Signaler. It's an item that you need one of to make basically any of the uh, capital ships. Um, we don't really like. We don't know where these are. There's none on the market. There's none that have been like dropped or anything. I personally believe that they're in uh, covert ghost sites and wormhole space. So that's my next quarry. We're going to be jumping into wormholes a bunch. We're going to go for those ghost sites and try and pick up one of those. Fun. That uh, that's uh, going to be interesting because now you have to deal with uh, you know any roll any holes being rolled behind you and all that. Uh, wormhole life stuff whole different set of concepts no permits there but a bunch of people will just shoot you nonetheless <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah uh so uh cassowary rider asks uh, maybe this is a good question right uh, have you ever seen where for ghost sites uh can you just start the hidden timer and then warp away with uh you know maybe the intention of blowing up the next guy after you does that happen um yeah, <laughs> like there's definitely different ways to gank people in those sites. I would say probably the easiest is just like tank your ship so that you can take an explosion and then just warp in um, and then like just hack a can or something or or rather better yet, you can you can start hacking a can and then you can see that they warp in. And as soon as like their invulnerability timer's gone, so like you see them starting to warp off, you just blow the can and then blow them up. Right. And you can take the hit, but they can't, and then you're good to go. Yes. Fun times. Uh, Posh fan mentioned in here, but asking a different question, but I'm curious. Do you know if there is different relic data sites in the Posh fan region? Or is that considered just a null sec? Or is that a... I, I, I don't know a whole lot yet? about Posh fan, but I believe that there's no data or, or relic sites Nothing in there. Nothing in there, okay. All right. Uh, that's interesting. Um now, uh, M Power asks, uh, "Do you, if the owners of a Citadel can see what you're building and researching?" I, I know the answer to that. The answer is no. They only see that a job has been started, and they see for how much. That's basically what they get to see. All right. So, um, okay. Any more uh, audience questions, or anything you want to have N Dimension touch on? Give that a second. So I see Warrior's comment. Um, what's even more interesting is that we have found super capital versions of the components. Um, yes, but the super capitals require, I think, 20 of each of these components, whereas you only need one of the capital components. So I, I still think that like finding 20 or like some of them are 20 and some of them are 10, but finding a lot of the capital com or super capital components is going to be harder. Because it, it, it's not it's not like you only need one of each of them. You need like 20 or 10 of them. Yeah, I think the numbers are still still going to be crazy. It's, that said, yeah, building a capital is going to be, uh, with this one item, is going to be interesting. Yeah. I, I, even the battleships uh, and, and cruisers, I mean, that's still a significant investment of time. And like you said, on the pirate side, if you're, uh, you know, Macarial Doctrine or, you know, Rattlesnake for for uh you know level fours and level fives and you you know stockpiling five or six of those to whatever your game is and if you're using pack, uh, faction um, battleships man that's gonna be you better get your exploration on or have a good ties with people so that actually raises another question Do you, is there like a explorers network where like a back-end market or a channel where you find this stuff you know there's lots of different uh, markets and back you know kind of in-game markets back channel ways is there do you know of such things is there ways to kind of get in on the or do i just have to go to the uh, market i i don't know um if there is please invite <laughs> um no i think it's just market but like i i think so you remember when the minerals got shifted around so trit was no longer in null sec right. and everyone was freaking out that they needed a high sec arm to mine the trit i think you need to be worrying about this more than that Really? Like, if you want to have, like, a like a new bro exploration corp in your null block, I don't think that's a bad idea. Yeah, the numbers are 
Yeah, just the numbers you're giving and the drop rate, right? And even if they even if they do turn the spigot up a bit, it's not like they're going to turn it up to 10 times that, right? I mean, that would be too much, right? So it would be some middle ground. So interesting. Yeah, uh, that sounds like a good prediction. So null sec folks, uh, even low sec folks, right? Just blocks, period. Groups who are interested in using the the various uh, empire and faction battleships, cruisers, frigates, if that's part of your doctrine, better start up an empire exploration group and do it pronto. Sage advice. All right. So uh, do, are there any other items you'd like to cover? Any, uh, open, I'll open it up to you. Is there any topics that you want to go over in another area or another direction or just anything you want to talk about? Um, I, I think it's really interesting and good that the CMCs are dropping only from like high sec and low sec. It's, it's a very interesting choice, but I think like making it so that, um, basically these new explorers have an option or like even old explorers, like there's a, there's an option that you can do what you want to do in high sec. Like personally, I'm not much of a, like a high sec player myself, but like some people just like the safety of like mining in high sec. Um, but like previously, there wasn't really a way you could do that for exploration. The payouts were just so incredibly low that it wasn't like I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Um, but now like there's there's possibly an option there. And there's also an option that like new people to the game can get used to exploring. They can learn the tricks of the trade. They can hone their craft in these safer areas quote unquote safer. I don't know if it'll end up actually being safer with code and whatnot. But um I think it's a I think it's a good and interesting choice. Uh, I do feel a little sad for the null sec data sites because I still don't think there's any reason to be doing any null sec data sites. Uh except for the special ones of course like the sleeper caches. Um and speaking of the sleeper caches, they were already worth doing all of them. And with these isotropic just deposition guides now dropping in them. They're just better. So like if you weren't doing them before because they were a little complex and whatnot, maybe maybe now's that that other step to make you go do them. Uh, that said, the, the isotropic deposition guides are very heavy. They're five M3 a pop. Uh, and you get like anywhere between 20 to 40 of them in a site. So if you don't have a cargo that's very large, maybe you're doing um, like an interceptor exploration, you need to consider that. Um, go sites... There's six new items that drop in ghost sites. Well, five confirmed. I'm pretty sure that the six is there too. Um, so six new items in a covert ghost site. That seems like a lot. Uh, and like maybe we could spread those out a little bit more. I don't know. Right. That's just my ramblings. No, that's no, that's good. It allowed uh, some time for some questions to come in. Nick Bison asks, you know, um, he's just saying, you know, do these also drop in non-ghost sites? Now, so I'm assuming he means do the ghost the items from the ghost sites drop in non ghost sites. I think you already kind of answered so far. You haven't found them, and only right. the stuff for the CMCs are in high sec and not the ghost site. They do seem to be segmented right now, correct? Right. So again, the segmentation is CMCs drop in all areas of high sec. Different factions have different drop rate or drop ones depending on their faction. Um, the six capital and super capital components drop, to my knowledge, only from covert ghost sites in uh, wormhole and null sec. Uh, the isotronic deposition guides drop from any and all sleeper caches as well. Um, confirmed that they drop in wormhole covert ghost sites. I don't think they drop from null covert ghost sites. Um, and then I think that's all of the items. Yeah. yeah and I'm so sorry. they they put them up. They put them like basically everywhere except for NullSec standard data sites. Right. Um, and they're 20 meters cubed as well, I'm uh, reading. So you'd need to uh, have some sort of logistics plan in your mind as well. You know, you're not going to be able to carry, you know, go exploring all day likely and have enough cargo space for all the stuff you're going to have to, which of course gets a little harder as the you know farther out you go or you go into wormhole space now you got a real potential problem there if they're that large uh bringing everything back um what about um 
do you have a breakdown where your asks? Is there a breakdown somewhere? Have you, are you writing this down or is it just come to your stream and check you out and, and, uh, or you have it listed somewhere? Are you documenting this? Um, I have it documented on an Excel document that you can see if you've joined my stream. <laughs> All right. Go to um, the stream then. Yeah. Um, so I'm not like, like, posting up anywhere but also like i'm not keeping it secret so like i don't know if you if you want it it's also not like in a presentation form you know so it's kind of like chicken scratch everywhere oh that's sometimes the best and i'm being corrected by worry just the cssa is 20 meters cubed the other stuff's five meters so but still if you're if you're going after those things and you know the logistics is going to have to be a um you know a concern so uh br melkavano melk Ivanio asks, "What uh, do you prefer, an Estero or a Stratios, or something else? What's your preferred ship?" Uh, so I'm definitely of the mindset that all of the exploration ships are good for different purposes, and that's anywhere between like your Hustle Heron, uh, just your T1 exploration frigate, all the way up to your un more unconventional options like a like a Nestor or a Cinnable. Um but if you're like asking for like a very standard ship that can get basically any job done, um, I would say a like an Astero is fine. Uh, like, but an Astero seems like a little bit much for for most of what you actually need to be doing. Um, with these new covert ghost site changes, and like definitely you want to be doing those. I think maybe going for a Stratios is a simple option. It does have a cruiser sized defense, so like it can tank those sites a lot easier. And you have to worry about fitting it a lot less in that regard. Um, but again, it, it, it really depends on like what you want to go do. And in, so to get quicker and faster and better at exploration, you want to basically both minimize the time it takes to do, uh, we'll call them your big fours, your, your, your uh, warping, your scanning, your hacking. And you're flying around on grid. So you, you at the same time, you want to minimize all four of those values of whatever you're doing. But you also want to like keep them in line. Because like maybe if you're devoting too much to reducing your, your like warp speed, then so like if you're, if you're flying in a pacifier, which has incredible warp speed, and you have three hyperspatials, like maybe you're dedicating a little bit too much to that. So instead of like you get rid of one hyperspatial and put on like, something that helps your scanning, like a scanning rig or something. So I, I think all of them can be super useful in a lot of different varieties. And it kind of depends on like how, what your logistics is looking like. And there's just a whole lot of things that I can't give one simple answer. Uh, that said, like T1 exploration frigates have 400 M3 in their cargo bay. That's absolutely ludicrous. Um, a, a Cinnable, while it doesn't have hacking bonuses and scanning bonuses, it does have a cruiser sized defenses and it, it warps faster than frigates and it goes around on grid faster than frigates when you fit correctly. Um, you could do a T3C. That's obviously, it's going to be, uh, it, T3Cs are incredibly slow on the grid, but they're also like a decent investment because if you lose them, and generally you will eventually lose something in your exploration, uh, losing a T3C is a little bit more hurtful than if you lose something like a Hustle Heron. Um, so, it just, it depends on your exact situation. <laughs> Went down the rabbit hole there with that question. Yeah, definitely. Kind of, not, it's a, it's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah, for sure. All right. So maybe a final question here. What do you, what do you see on the prices so far? So we started this out as pricing, right? The markets are going crazy. This got you into doing this stuff. Are you kind of tracking the pricing just of these uh, exploration items? Yeah. So I'm mainly tracking the prices of the CMCs because I think that's what's most interesting here. Um, and I'll just say that I have the leading buy order in all of them in Amar and Jita, uh, or at least I try to keep the leading buy order on all of them. Um, because I, I think currently the prices of them is, is ludicrously low. Um, but I, what I think their actual value is, it's incredibly hard to say. Um, and it also depends on like willingness to buy for the people that want them. Like, like how much do you value your material over a um, uh, like a tempest, right? Um, I think the difference is going to get a lot steeper between those two prices. I think probably a tempest will go down in price, maybe, and then like a material will go like up in price. 
question is how much how much people are willing to pay for these cmcs uh if i were to like because of how rare they are currently and again i think this will probably be tuned up but just on current data um i think like this is gonna sound crazy but i think like 10 million a pop is probably a fair price wow no kidding okay that's crazy that's uh all right well so then uh that's maybe a good uh good way to end it 10 million a i'm pop. not buying the well yeah <laughs> so i'm not buying them <laughs> at 10 million a pop right now but if oh, they yeah. get to 10 million to sell i would not be surprised oh look it's look it's me buying things <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I remember seeing you that, and I remember I remember uh, someone uh, sniping your order, and you were kind of aggravated by. It. Yeah, I was just trying to buy all the sell orders at that point, and someone else was also doing the same thing because that that's one of the problems with streaming. Your, your secrets can't be so secret. I'm sorry yeah. that we. So uh, uh, all right, so let's just wrap up with. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just no. saying, I'm sorry that we've uh, we've brought you on here to sort of spill all of oh, your no, secrets. Oh no, that's great. It's fine. Hopefully, hopefully, some high sec explorers are like, "Oh, I can make money now." Excellent. So, uh, McLeod, if you could throw the the uh, Twitch channel for Nth Dimension in the chat, and uh, how about you just oh, give you an sure. opportunity here to kind of pimp out your your uh, your stream, tell people what you're doing, when's your next, when's the next time you're going to stream, how long do you normally stream for, give us all the stream in details. Yeah, here's all the deets. So we stream EVE online exploration content every day starting at approximately 1500 EVE time for approximately three to five hours. Uh, of course, things change. Uh, things get weird. Um, tomorrow, we're going to be diving into some wormholes, looking for some of these covert ghost sites and wormholes. Uh, but basically, we're always doing exploration content, looking to improve uh, our how we do that all the time. Little things here, little things there. Uh, also love to give out information, help people, teach people, um, all that good stuff. Oh, a little, little pro tip here is check out your filter settings on your probe window and like create new filter. Uh, if you watch the stream, I'll go over it, uh, explicitly, but you can do some really cool things there. And also the B button B for Becky will auto release your probes if they're not released. So no more hitting whatever your other hotkey for your probe scanner is, or heaven forbid, clicking on it, just just click the B button. B button for Becky. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much for coming on the show and giving us a wonderful breakdown of the, the exploration and the new changes and how the impact of the upcoming changes are going to change exploration, I think, uh, uh, without a doubt, certainly for high-sec scanners and... And for anyone needing all those components, uh, thank you very much for everyone listening. And that is all we have tonight on Talking Stations. See you guys tomorrow night. A pleasure. I'll see you tomorrow night as well. <laughs> I'll just be watching. <laughs>